All right, Peter Murphy, welcome, buddy. How are you doing? Pretty good, Martin. How are you? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty good. It's Friday. I'm happy to be through yet another week of work. Here we are, guys, a special one chimp and typing with his friends, uh, maybe Sans George tonight. Uh, I've got Peter here with me now, and I've got Jake entering the fray. You got a sort of worried look on your face. What's going on? Maybe a problem with your vision, or you got your head hit and you're suffering from a concussion. What's going on? Jake, hello, buddy. Hey, all right. How's it going? Yeah, we're doing all right. We're uh, just um, trying to... What's from Pia? That's a good question. I got, va I got vaccinated. <laughs> all right. Yeah, he got, you know, yesterday, got? He, he got his... Uh, Wednesday, Wednesday. Wednesday? Was it Wednesday already? Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, it was Wednesday. Huh, okay. Time flies. It was good. It was good. It was good. Everything's, so everything's fine. been good then? No, everything's been normal, right? Everything's fine. Any pains or um, discomfort? I had I had uh, some dreams. Okay. Have you ever seen the episode of South Park where this new craze hits the town where the kid starts uh, sniffing cat urine? Oh, you're doing that here? Yeah. No, I'm not doing it, but I'm saying the, the effects. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Uh, but the effects of it are like you know randy has these crazy dreams and kenny has these crazy dreams yeah it's kind of like that having these crazy dreams but it's it's been good i've enjoyed it i want to go back for my second dose have you ever noticed um have you ever noticed like when you're ill um uh well particularly for example if you went to bed and you didn't think you were ill but somewhere in the night you became ill and you do have these really vivid dreams. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes you wake up out of them and then that's when you realize, holy shit, I have the flu or I have a fever or I whatever feel, it is. I feel really important though that I'm I'm like in my early thirties and I've been vaccinated. I feel yeah, like- Yeah, uh, how come you got it? I don't know. I feel like a chosen but, one. No, like Moses came to me and he's like, Peter, come this way. You are the chosen one. What's uh, going on then? He's well, Martin, Martin, you haven't got it, have you? I no, have Martin not. hasn't. No, he's not important enough, obviously. Um, yeah, clearly. But, How can but, you add uh, to that? Oh, because I'm important. I've told you three times. Well, no, 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 no. Well, we know that's not true. So. Well, I, mean, <laughs> I am. I am. Because Tuesday, he was called in to sign his contract, but he had too many lessons, and I haven't been called in yet. And I know I'm a better teacher than Peter is. So what the fuck? <laughs> No, <laughs> uh, I, lucky you both got well, you can, uh, I, 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 I just, I'm important. What can I tell yeah, you? Uh, they, they, they want, they want to keep me around a little while longer. They want to keep them uh, around, literally. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, literally, yeah, and professionally, yeah. Uh, but you know what the, with the vaccine is, like, I feel like a chosen person, but like, you know, what can I do? Uh, but have you ever seen the episode of The Simpsons, uh, Treehouse of Horror, where the yeah, Earth well, is blow up? Yeah. And they're sending all the celebrities and smart people to, to Mars. Mm -hmm. And then whole, uh, Lisa and Marge get on that rocket. And then Bart's like, don't worry, Dad, to Homer. We're, we can get on this rocket. And they get on the rocket. And it's all like the B-list celebrities from the 90s. Oh, you know? And they're actually sending that rocket into the sun. That's kind of oh. how I feel about the vaccine. I'm like, which, which one have I gotten? Have I gotten the one that's going to Mars or the one that's going to be shot into the sun? You know, so, I was going to ask you, Peter, um, I was going to ask you to check the vial, to personally inspect the vial. I did. I okay, did. good. <laughs> because, Jake, because on his, on his appointment from the website, on his appointment, you could see that they were going to give him the BioNTech vaccine and not Cinevac. So... They're not sparing any coin. They're making sure that, um, but I am curious if the Turks are getting the same vaccine or if they're getting Sinovac. No, I chose it. There was a choice for Sinovac and BioNTech and I said, oh. look, I'll go for Pfizer. So yeah. I chose that one. And, um, and then when I got there, because all the people at uh, my work or our work were kind of like, I don't know which one to get, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm not getting no Sinovac shit when there's Pfizer. Yeah, you know, it, it'd be like ordering, you know, I don't know, like 
there's it's incomparable. There's nothing I can compare it to in life. Yeah. It's like it's like, do you want the parachute with the hole or the one that's like you know knitted well? Like I'm like I'll take the good parachute. And like we uh, said, it's got fifty percent in it. The Sinovac. Yeah. yeah. Pfizer's yeah. 95 and so far very few issues. So anyway, there was nobody lining up for the um, Sinovac. Nobody. <laughs> Which I was surprised at because I was like, okay, people here. And also I asked her, I was like, can I see the vial? And like, they go, yes. But they showed it to me. I'm like, okay, okay. All right. Bio. That worries okay. me that they're going to run out of it by the time they get to high school. I was worried about that too, man. And I was like one of the first people there. And like, I'm like, I really hope they don't run out of BioNTech because I do not want to take Sinovac. Yeah. So the, the, the priority is primary school teachers first, Jake, and then they'll mm. graduate to middle and then finally high school teachers. So... Yeah, I, I prefer the British way we did there. We did by age, purely by age. Not about professions. I think you get it gets too complicated, then, doesn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's like well, well, no, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. It. They are doing it by age as well, but in terms mm. of um, uh, educators, you know, this is all a lobbying effort, right? So somebody mm. obviously lobbied enough people lobbied that they felt like educators should be prioritized regardless of their age groups but age groups are also prioritized here too so i'm not exactly yeah. sure what the the intricacies are of it but um but but my understanding is obviously they're prioritizing the older most vulnerable population and and we're Jake, vulnerable by virtue of our exposure every day to young i people. i was shocked man i was shocked Germ spreaders. Hmm. they said oh. it in the whatsapp group uh, Wednesday, Tuesday morning, they said in the WhatsApp group, mm. and someone says like, "Oh, I got my call for go get my vaccine." And I'm like, "What the f?" You know. So then, like, I like I said, "Where did you find that?" Then there was the whole thing. Oh, you have to go onto the the medical website. You have your own page, and I'm like, right. "Oh my god!" So then I went onto the government website, my e devlet uh, which is the uh, every person who lives here can have if they want this website where they can do their address and their medical stuff and everything. And then I, I made my own uh, health thing. I don't know what you call it. Site for myself, like a Facebook page for medicine, basically for your health profile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, profile. And um, and then I just clicked it and it says, yeah, you um, have been chosen. You are cho you, like you're the chosen one, like you know. And um, I was like, uh, oh, my God. And like straight away, I booked it. I was shocked. Not even my mother in Ireland had gotten a vaccine. Yeah. I know us. Yeah. Like, like I said, I think I said last week, my friend, he's, he's at it. He's like 30 and stuff. So um, I, I don't know. I presume I'd be coming soon. But uh, he must be no, very I'm surprised important. you got it. What's that? Must be, your friend must be very important. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Both of you must be very important. But did you have any side effects then? Or? Uh, honestly, my arm, was, my arm was sore after it for two days. And then when I got home, I was extremely hungry. So I got hmm. like, um, just for the sake of the audience, I'll just say I got a pizza, a tea day. And um, then uh, I had some soup. And then I went to sleep for five hours, woke up and... I just went straight to the fridge. I was so thirsty. Oh, really? And I, just, oh, right. I just took out like six oranges and I literally didn't even peel them. I just ripped them open and started going. Oh, like, wow. I wow. Took everything out of the like these six oranges and then drank a bottle of water and then went back to bed for the rest of the Is night. It, it sounds and, like a Hanover. No, Do you know when was, you wake up and you're like dry was, mouth and you're, oh, and you're I just like, just, yeah. Yeah, it, 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 without the headache, there was. It was just mm. I was very tired and very thirsty. And then the next day, I was. I went for a run. I did all my exercise. I was fine, but was still a little bit tired. Today, then I was like one hundred percent. I was perfect. And so um, now that you've had um, <laughs> obviously shot number one, um, how's everything below the belt? Um, I, do you know what? I'm afraid to check. 
I'm afraid to check, man. I'm afraid to check because uh, <laughs> it's one of those. I think it'd be a psychological thing. Uh, everything worked, but it's only been a few days, so there's been no kind of. Let's just say there's been no arousal in my life to make it necessary for that to be checked. You know, because I'm not. I'm not. I'm not the kind of person who's gonna, you know, open up a phone <laughs> and do it. You know. Um, uh, when I mean, oh, is that email, like what is that? Yeah. What is there reports for that? That's a problem, or oh, uh, no, remember, he had a pre existing condition, and I, uh, I saw an article yesterday no. about some uh condition like cancer, or um, what was it? I saw like <laughs> people have had COVID. <laughs> People have had I, I, th I think Pete has no, got look, to clarify now for the audience day, what, you know, what his pre-existing condition is we'll so we them, don't get we'll embarrassed. Let them, <laughs> we'll let them sit on this for a minute. So um, I saw this article about people who had COVID and after mm. COVID, like their cancer went away. I mean, I saw this article yesterday. I didn't read it, but I saw the headline. Oh. And so, okay. so you had some pre that, that, Yeah, I had a pre existing which was basically a huge thing. And that has completely gone in Not the last an STD. three days. No, no, no. no. This is, I mean, actually, if, I've never had yeah. an STD, but like I, I, this, this, I'd consider this to be worse or uh, this would be worse than an STD. I don't know. If STDs are Sister, bad, man. I don't know. It, no, it's a, it's, um, when you, I've been running 10K a day, and mm. what happened was one of the hairs got inverted. Ingrown, uh, yeah. Yeah. Or ingrown, yeah. yeah. So it was something like that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so I that's gone that. now. But I, 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 it, it went away about the same time I got the vaccine. So who knows? He was like, this is the top two worst things that have ever happened to my junk. In <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, is like I've when I was talking worse. to did I tell you this story, actually? When I went to get it checked out, I went to the Pomacali University. Yeah, Hospital. yeah, it's funny. <laughs> tell did, I tell it, did I tell it on the podcast? No, 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 tell the story. Oh, okay. it's funny. Um, I went in there, and I'm sitting there in, like, my suit and tie and everything, and I'm just like, all right, I'm just going to explain to this doctor exactly what's going on here, okay? And Because it's like, say this is your, your legs. It's right here. And say if your, your private parts are here, it's right between your private parts and your legs, right in that crease, okay? So I'm like, when he comes in, I'm just going to, he says, where's the problem? I'm going to point here, look, look here it is there, okay? <laughs> anyway, he comes in with 20 interns, okay? And they're all about 20, 21, 22, most of them female. And I'm like, are you serious? Are you all coming in here? And he's like, yes, yes, I'm just showing them like what a serious problem is. I'm like, what? Well, you're showing them what a serious problem is. He's like, no, I'm not saying that it's a serious problem, but like, I, they're just observing me. I'm like, look, I only need one doctor, you know? And then I said, by the way, it's like a pandemic and you're bringing 20 people into a tiny room. Right. You know, like, I'm like, what's going on here? So like, just tell me what's wrong. Like, where's the problem? I'm like, no, like, there's 20 other people here. So then like a few of them left. He's like, where's the problem? Eventually I said, look, it's there. Like, there he goes, okay, I'll, I'll get someone to check you. And I'm like, all right, what was all that about? It was so stupid. Well, it's and a, it's guy, a And it was misdiagnosed. Hospital. He said I had um, a swollen lymph node, yeah. which can be cancer, but actually it was an ingrown hair. So anyway, that's that. Yeah. Afghanistan. Afghanistan, yeah. <laughs> so, so um, in a similarly related thing, we're pulling out, pulling out of Afghanistan, that is. <laughs> I think we got to stay in there at, until the bitter end. No pulling out, condom, no condom. We got to give them gotta everything. Give them a that right, Jake? Nice, juicy cream pie. Um, yeah, when you've been there for so long, you've got. You got responsibilities, then, isn't it? I suppose you know what I mean. Yeah, if you want to yeah, take care of take well, it's been analogy. more than eighteen years, so technically, you know, God, does it be eighteen years? It's been twenty years. I mean, yeah. So I yeah, so yeah, it's been twenty years. Isn't it? yeah. The longest war in U.S. history that is not a um, war. Yeah, we should. I I don't think we should pull out, and I know like a lot of left wing people are cheering this and stuff as well, but like. 
my opinion is, you know, the Taliban aren't, you know, they're not good people. I mean, they blew up a maternity ward a couple of months ago. Do you know, what I mean? and that was when that was when Donald Trump was negotiating with them, which mean I was like, you know, one day in the news it was, oh, Donald Trump is negotiating with the Taliban. Next day they blew up a bloody maternity ward and killed babies and and mothers. Yeah, like what the fuck is wrong with it? Do you know what I mean? So us pulling out, and what will happen? I hear people on the Young Turks talk about this. They said, oh yeah, the Taliban will take over. It's like, well, that's not that's not acceptable. Do you know what I mean? That is not that's not on. Yeah. It's the same yeah. with um, Hamas. Well, not the same, but similar with Hamas in Israel. It's kind of like, I, look, I'm pro-Palestinian. Uh, I'm a big advocate for for Palestine. But um, Hamas are a problem because they do do shit like you just said, like blow up hospitals and blow up this and blow up that. And yeah, they, they're Hamas, just like ISIS. Hamas, well, I mean, Taliban. Hamas, no, you know? no, Hamas can't be compared because... You know, Hamas hasn't blown up a hospital and I don't know when, and they haven't blown up a maternity ward and I don't know when. All Hamas has done are shoot these feckless, glorified fireworks in randomly with no ability to control their trajectory. They literally kill nobody, right? Like nobody. It's lucky and, they don't kill anybody because well, of the iron Well, it is lucky, dome. but it's also part and parcel of the fact that the distance the rocket has to fly and populated zones that they could potentially hit do not intersect. Mm -hmm. And and so I don't really see them as being the same. Now, now if you want to go back in, in, in time, back to the 80s, Yasser Arafat, then, you know, you can, you can make a case for like... Uh, you know, the PLO and all of that. Yeah, definitely. But, you know, Hamas has got a... Still, uh, no, a you're right, but it's still a problem because you... They're not, they're not, let's be honest about it. They're, they're not on the same yeah, level of ISIS. Yeah, or... They're not on the same level as Taliban, oh, no, but no they're, they're not good people, though, are they? I mean, they're, they're, they're I mean, the, the, or Hamas... Or Hamas, or Spark, or Khmer Rouge. It's like not even in the same galaxy. I, I think but, basically they're Sinn Féin for Palestine. Nah, I you don't like, think so. I, I'm in the middle of you both because like I I they're not ISIS, they're not Taliban, but at the same time they've never really had much opportunity to do stuff. They are literally just stuck in Gaza, and the thing is, well, they they they've even said before they want the entire eradication of the Jewish race. Yeah, that's a problem. Like, I shouldn't say I, that. And, that's a problem. Do you know what I mean? That's a, that's a very big problem. But the, luckily, in a sense, they never had the chance to do much, except from, like Martin said, fired rockets, which are just like fireworks, basically. Yeah. But like, maybe if they had the opportunity, they would do sure. some damage, you know? Right. And that, that's a problem. Also, but if you imagine that you'd been picked on for the last 50 or 60 or 70 years, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you would probably wish their family was dead like if you had a bully like uh marty mcfly if you imagine that biff like um victimized the family for two or three generations you'd probably want Biff's family to die too so and and but but at the same time having said that i almost don't think that they're as a hundred percent committed to that idea it's just like this verbal reaction to something that's been happening because they're they're really so powerless. Um, there are other um, elements within the Arab world that do want to see uh, the eradication of the Israeli people and have Iraq. certainly the ability to do it um, or at least wage a good fight to do it. So, uh, you know, it's apples and oranges. Yeah, and the Taliban, that's, I mean, the yeah, they, Taliban never really been into contact with Israel before, but they've won that. Do you know what I mean? And let's be honest, the Taliban aren't like the Taliban we knew in the 2000s. They're basically ISIS now. Do you know what I mean? The the, the three groups, Al-Qaeda, um, Islamic State, the Taliban, They their ideologies have changed all into what an extremism. Do you know what I mean? And, and I mean, there are remnants of Al-Qaeda for I think, oh, the ISIS are too far, but we're talking about Al-Qaeda here yeah, at the end like, of the day. You know, the they, American soldiers they did some pretty awful shit. Them either. You know, there was, was I saw some, uh, the American soldiers don't want to deal with them either. They actually despise dealing with <clears> them. I mean, not just on a professional level, on a hu human level, they think these people are ab abhorrent. 
I saw some report years ago about this American general uh, or you know, colonel or whatever. And he was talking like, I have to deal with this leader who's now in charge of the Afghan army. He's part of the Taliban. I know for a fact that every night I've seen him do it. He grabs these 13 year old boys and he basically rapes them every night, you know? Uh, yeah. I mean, I got, I got to find it to like, I mean, it's very, well, is that an Afghan general? Is it? It's an I got Afghan general and he's basically into boys. Mm. And you know, if you're, you, there's no saying that the 10, 11, 12 year old boy is into it because you know, it's, that's impossible. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's a child abuse and it's rape. Yeah, and exactly. It's, 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 yeah. Everything you can think it's of rape. that's abhorrent. Point being, he's saying like, and now we have to deal with these people face to face, human to human. And it's like, it's so hard because I don't see him as a, I'm, you know, ad living here, but he's like, basically, I don't see him as a human being, you know, because of what he's doing is so disgusting. And this is the position that they find themselves in. It's like, so either leave the place and let them eat each other, or how would you bring someone up from the depths of hell to your eye line? How long is that going to take? A hundred years? I mean, I think that like a part of this problem is like um, what you said, like bringing them up from hell. And, you know, it's, it's like, obviously they're not living in hell. Um, and the people that live there are not, have not been condemned to hell um so it's really tricky because like in in the latter part of the 20th century and certainly after world war ii i feel like there's been way too much diplomacy when it comes to war so it should either be diplomacy or it should be fight for victory and there should be no in between and this idea where you're negotiating and working with and whatever mm. no pound pound the geography into glass <clears throat> if you're going to go to war turn it they into did mind they did but it's like Afghan afghanistan's a tricky situation i mean you remember Tora bora back when the original i mean yeah. they pounded that but guess what people so i mean there's a network of caves underneath there do you know what i mean it's uh i mean and it's not like i you know the british army's been there they call it the graveyard of empires you know yeah, um, listen the world is not like very tolerant of extreme brutality. If the United States wanted to finish that conflict, all they had to do is spend two or three days dropping, um, you know, um, nuclear bombs in Afghanistan. Uh, and no, 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 listen, to listen to me, listen to me. No, no, you're, you're not, but you're not listening yeah, to the point I make. The point I'm making is if you want to stop the problem, Mm. that's one way to stop the problem it stops mm. it immediately and it stops it in perpetuity at least as long as any of us are alive because there'll be so much fallout and radiation that people will not be able to inhabit that area for a hundred years you know and and perhaps longer uh, but of course you can't contain the nuclear fallout so consequently you would create um more enemies than it's worth from the neighbors, right? And, and this is the problem is that uh, the geography makes it prohibitive to go in there and fight a conventional war. Um, mm -hmm. International relations makes it impossible to nuke the place to glass and diplomacy doesn't work. So with those three things that we just contemplated, right? This kind of gets to my um, earlier conversation with you. Like, I, I can't see why we should continue the war machine there when we're not really fighting a war, but it's still costing us a billion dollars a day. You know what I mean? And, and maybe we scuttlebutt out of there. And I know this is not very popular, but we scuttlebutt out of there and let the, the temperature rise there to where the, the international community decides to go in there and do something different. You know, like, like they, they go a bridge too far, let's say, for example, the mm. Taliban does. And, yeah. then, yeah. and then 
something happens like you know the un like takes away its charter and six countries move in and take occupancy and it's no longer afghanistan it's we've something. done that though it was nato man it was a nato mission there were brits there there were americans there and it didn't like i i just think the law you is hearts and minds and i feel that think, think about um berlin uh it, it was it was england yeah. so if it, that wasn't nato then what i'm talking about is something that's not nato either it's like you know one part the uk and one part germany and one part yeah, divide it up. Well, we, did, it up. we did do that in the NATO mission. I mean, like the British had Helmand Province, for yeah, example. Yeah, but, you but, know, I mean, but, it was one just one example. Still, it was and, NATO. And, but if you say, for with, example, like a hundred years, for a hundred years, it's not going to be Afghanistan. It's going to be like say five or six different, um, you know, uh, bifurcations that are controlled in perpetuity for a hundred years at least by these other nations and they go in there and they infrastructure the hell out of it and they convert the people or they imprison them in perpetuity you know what i'm saying like if if five or six nations were in there for a hundred years believe me things would change but it can't be nato it can't be like little blue helmeted troops that are maybe could go it would be like when it, the when when britain had Hong Kong for a hundred years. That's what yeah. happened. You know, like uh, the, the problem. The problem with I mean, like there were no like Hong Kong nationalists doing a guerrilla war. But what I against, really want to know is that's true. Um, you know, know and, the and these people are, are they bad. tough fighters, the Taliban. You know. Yeah, but I know the Taliban are bad, and uh, mm. but I I just want to know is like, uh, and I mean this in all sincerity. It's like, why do you care? It's because no, I did no because at the end of the day, what like I, I'm sure Peter, you cared when you saw what happened with ISIS. Like we saw the Yazidi, like being either if they were too old, they were buried alive. If they were young enough and women, they were taken as sex slaves. Gay yeah. people were thrown off buildings and hand just for the simple crime of being gay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, people were crucified for having <clears throat> a different religion. I, I think most people care about that shit. And like you know, when you hear about maternity wards being blown up. Like what type of fucking monsters? Sorry, pardon my language, but what well, type I, of monsters do that? And no, these, I agree. These Taliban are monsters. Like, do you know what I mean? And they have, they, they. I go as far to say as this: ISIS and the Taliban and stuff are worse than the Nazis because the Nazis are vicious. We all know that. We all know they're cruel and stuff, right? But they, they got to a point where they hadn't. They were shooting people, and they thought, "How can we make this more efficient?" All right, that's not right. That's wrong. That's they Nazis are evil, but these people take pride and take pleasure in putting TNT around people's necks yeah. to well, blow it up or slowly dipping them in. You're, right, Jake. you're right, Jake. And video sure. recorded. You know what I mean? That so, so Nazis imagine, are awful, but these people are that imagine, extra. Imagine mile. if six countries occupied Afghanistan for the next hundred years and they weren't going anywhere. How long do you really think the Taliban could hide in the caves when you send 60 or $70 trillion of wealth in there and mm. literally start like remaking the entire topography of the land? There's no caves for them to hide in. Um, eventually, like the problem, the reason why the Taliban the reason why this whole thing has been unsuccessful is because people cut and run. Now they may stay there longer than they expected to, but eventually everybody cuts and run. But if you simply take away the sovereignty of the nation and you put five or six first world countries in there and you let them extract the lithium and the basalt from the country and you modernize the fuck out of it and you educate the fuck out of it and you healthcare the fuck out of it and you democratize the fuck out of it, eventually all the Taliban are gonna die. Or they're going to fuck off somewhere else and stir shit up somewhere else where they're not they're not natives to that territory and they'll but be also, really like isolated. With, with Jake's point about like uh, with the Taliban, I used to feel that way. Like maybe three or four years ago, I used to feel that way. But then, you know, there's twenty, there's millions of slaves in India, and we do right. business with them. We're not doing the anything. Uyghurs, about, yeah. The, the Uyghurs are being genocided right now, and we yeah. still buy Chinese products. 
I don't think uh, there's a lot in, of in, weakness, though. I don't think it's really on the same par. There, you know, there's really not that. Uh, they're being they're being put into internment camps. Sure, not sure. Part, but as like, far as we know, the, the the there's there's in in Africa there's like female genital mutilation. They chop off uh, in Rwanda. They chopped off arms and mm-hmm. and you know it's just there's so much going on and there's so much to care about. You know, it's it's better just to focus on for me on none of it uh like i remember just to bring it back uh, to uh popular culture so have you ever seen game of thrones yeah wow. i've seen game of thrones yeah there was uh <laughs> i love how uh, jake said that very subtly yeah i've seen game yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah there, there, there was there was a scene and i was all Snow. over he was their biggest fan i love, yeah, I love game of thrones yeah but john yeah, snow goes fun. up to the to the north to, to save the wildlings, okay? So there's yeah. 13 and a half million said, Uyghurs estimated in China. I didn't realize the number was that big. I'll shut my mouth. There's only 8 yeah. million people in Israel. But, so. but, but, but John Snow goes up to, to, the, to the far north to help the wildlings, this group of people, this ethnic group who mm. are being killed by this unknown force. And the people in the south don't want to do it because there's always been war between the wildlings and the people in the south. Anyway, Jon Snow goes up there, he brings them back down, and as a result, he gets, there's a mutiny, and he punishes the mutineers for trying to mutiny on him, and he's hanging the head mutineer, who's this very old, sage, like, you know, stoic man, yeah. and says any last words, Sir Alistair Thor, and any last words, and he says, look, I fought and I lost, but now I rest, and he turns to Jon Snow, but now you'll be fighting their wars for the rest of your life. And that's how I feel about getting upset about the Taliban, the Uyghurs, the fucking shit in Africa. It's kind of like, it's never going to end, man. It, the uh, world is just a it... never-ending cycle of shit storms. And I... I, 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 it's an I eter- you're right. It's an eternal battle. But if you don't fight it, it'll knock on your door soon enough. But you got to choose the right one, though. I, 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 I don't think the Taliban are really worth, or the, no, I, no, I, I think I think, Afghanistan, I think the Afghan people are worth it, though. It's not about the Taliban whether they're worth it or not. It's about the Afghan people, and in that regard, yeah. I totally am with Jake. Jake, I hope you understand when I said that thing earlier about nuke it into glass. I was just simply trying to set up three potential things. And, oh, yeah, no, no, yeah. And how they yeah. all failed <laughs> in one way or another. What yeah. I really want to do, I want to, mm. like, I believe that you could win every war if you simply overwhelmed your opponent. Now, in the case of Afghanistan, you Money. could overwhelm the Taliban and suffocate them, not through war but by yeah. taking away the sovereignty of the country, removing the corrupt elements of the government and military, and just moving six countries in there that are committed to extracting the mineral wealth of the country. I know it's not a popular thing. It's a very col- col- colonial idea, mm. but you then you populate the country with different nationalities. And no matter how hard the Taliban fight in 10 or 15 or 20 years, they will be gone, but we're not going to be gone for another 80 years. You see, there was that, there, there's something like, I agree with you on some of the points there. Um, there was that film, what was it called? Tom's War or something? It was like, what was it? Oh, Charlie Wilson's War. Charlie Wilson's War. Yeah, that's right. And that's right it. at the end of that, because he was the kind of the Republican guy who was actually giving grenade launchers and stuff to the Taliban. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And then right at the end of the film, it kind of, it, it had this twist then, you know, that they'd be our enemies and they are now. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's right. It was about school funding. And he was yeah, like, yeah. oh, so where, where's the money for the school funding? It's like, ah, oh, we don't care about that. They, they beat the godless communists. That's all we need. And um, yeah, you think about that. I mean, that that's the solution really, isn't it? And I think if you, if you do put the infrastructure in, if you do, but, you know, that costs a lot of money. You put the infrastructure in, you put the education in, you know what I mean? You put... It you pays for like oh, with the lithium yeah. and the basalt extraction from underneath. They make jobs then, I suppose. At least. I, I know it's a bit colonialism taking out that it, kind of It is stuff, what but, it um, is. But, some, but as long as the as long as the nation benefits, you know, and it benefits you financially. Have a cancer, sometimes you have a cancer that you got to mm. attack radically. And it's proven that like chemotherapy and radiation 
therapy are not working in Afghanistan. So it's got to be something else. Well, and you can't you can't beat them militarily because they play in a they, that's right. You know the that's terrain. Right. Yeah, it's guerrilla warfare. The and and the only way you do that is hearts and minds. But you, you're right. You've got you've got to put the money in for the education. You've got to put job opportunities in there as well. Do you know what I mean? And and because a lot, a lot of the time. The, the, my ninth grade yeah. students are reading a book called Teacher Man by a guy named Frank McCourt. And Frank McCord. Oh, uh, Frank was, McCourt. Yeah, yeah. He's born in uh, America, but grew up in Ireland, then went back to America for his university. And he was a teacher, right? So he wrote this book, Teacher Man. And in the story, um, uh, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that I'm thinking of a different story now. Pardon me leaving okay. Microsoft to change the world. So my other, my 10th grade students are, are reading, leaving Microsoft to change the world. And um, at the time he started his nonprofit organization, because he left Microsoft to start a nonprofit in Nepal, build, uh, creating, um, first getting books there, then creating libraries, schools, scholarships, et cetera. Um, when he expanded to other countries, and this nonprofit still exists today, in the very beginning, September 11th happened, okay? And when September 11th happened, he was trying to fundraise like a mad dog. And he was so concerned that with September 11th happening, that Americans would be unwilling to give to international charities that they would only mm -hmm. thinking about home, you know? Um, mm -hmm. But it gets to the very heart of something that's so important, right? Wherever you have these problems throughout the world, you can definitely defeat them with education, right? Mm -hmm. and, and the only way you can do that is you got to go in there, you got to commit, you got to build, you got to spend money, you got to educate, yeah. and, and you cannot leave. You can't leave. You just can't do it. Um, at least not for the foreseeable. Not, not until the job's done. done. Yeah. And I know, I know that I know, like, it's easy for us to sit here because we never, you know, we're not, not sure about the Afghan war and yeah. stuff, but it's, it like we leak we and it's for Joe Biden politically as well for Joe Biden because it, if you were clever as Republicans and I'm sure they will do this you know the Taliban will take over there will be crucifixions there will be beheadings there will be there'll be there'll be misery and sor sorrow throughout that and ISIS will be involved as well and if you were the Republicans you'd be plastering that left right and center do you know what I mean saying look of what you do you know what I mean I you have this tyranny yeah yeah you know because it's it's a hard one because, you know, no one wants war. No one wants to stay there. Do you know what I mean? And I, I'm sure a lot of Afghan people don't want British Americans there and stuff as well. But, like, I think a lot of, you know... If you want to defeat the Afghans, what you got to do is you got to poison the It's not the, the Afghans, milk. though, is it? It's you like, gotta, like you Martin gotta said, it's, the it's for the Afghans. As in, it's, like, are they worth it? Do you know what I mean? It's, it's you know... The Afghan <laughs> people are worth it. Exactly. But yeah. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm, America very seldom actually goes into countries fighting a war to actually improve or democratize nations. Now, we'll say that we'll pay that lip service to sell the war to mm -hmm. the people to get the legislation passed. But in reality, there's always some ulterior motive, either to set up a base next to Iran or to extract mineral or, or um, you know, energy from that country, like in the case of Iraq. There's always mm -hmm. some like real motive. And then there's the, you know, the, the thing that we sell to the people. I think in the case of Afghanistan, it, you know, it would be dreamy to just have people move in there for 100 years. They're not going anywhere, you know. We're here, we're queer, deal with it, that kind of thing. And, and, and just suffocate the Taliban until- Can you imagine uh, Mardi Gras in the streets of Kabul? Can you imagine? <laughs> That's right. Can you imagine gay pride parade? Yeah, in Kabul, I'd imagine it. Yeah. But here's the thing, is, it reminds me of my, I'm, I'm sorry. I, um... Less than a minute now, guys. I wanna just, in case we get cut off, I wanna thank my guests, Jake and Peter for coming out. George uh, in the family man couldn't make it with us. Um, I tried to invite Rebecca. That didn't work out. Go ahead, Jake. It reminds me of my stag do. On my stag do, we were in Denizli, the Turkish, quite a conservative city somewhat. And uh, we all wore Hawaiian T-shirts with like flowers. And we, we did look like a Mardi Gras parade going down the street. Like, wish I met you, MP. It would have been fun.
Oh, I would have been all over him. I would have been. Oh, he's got it. There you go. I still <laughs> have mine. That's right. Yeah. But the looks we had from uh, some of got my shirt, too. God, they were like, what? The they fuck? loved it. They loved they it. They were just jealous, man. They, they were, were honking jealous. the horns as they <laughs> They were sharing photos. Oh, before we go, I just want to say two things. Uh, Israel and uh, Hamas and also vaccine. Okay. Bill Gates, <laughs> I love you. World Health Organization, Republic of Ireland, I hate you. Uh, you guys are the best. Republic oh, of Ireland, I hate you. What is well, he doing dude, right now? Dude, 